Welcome back to another video. Recently I was reviewing some of the Viewer Projects videos and I was looking at Wally and his 68 convertible that he's building up in Canada. And Wally had a similar issue with his quarter panel that I had with the Brooklyn Pony. And I had to break loose the welds and reshape the quarter so that it fit the extension better. And I thought, I need to revisit that on Jade and see what that looks like. Now his car is a 68, and of course Jade is a 68. And I've already put on quarter panels, tail panel, all that stuff. If you haven't seen those videos, I suggest you go back and take a look at those. But this video, I want to talk about the quarter panel and the way it fits the tail panel and the way the extension fits everything involved with that. Now, like I said, Wally had issues with his, and he remedied it the same way that I did with the Brooklyn Pony, which was to break loose some welds and then reshape the quarter. That's probably what I'm going to have to do with this. So I thought I would take a little time, show you the fitment of my quarter panel extension, and the likelihood that I'm going to have to modify it and fix it the same way Wally did. Okay, if you look at that video that Wally showed, he had a problem with the panel being flat or flatter than it should be and the extension having a more of a curve to it. So I'm going to show you at least how this looks from this perspective and I'll, I'll change angles here in a minute. But basically if I try to line up the extension with the inside flange of where the trunk lid would seat or sit, you know, overlap, let's say. Um, I end up with material needed to build out the quarter panel to match the extension. If I move it in, then I end up with a, you know, needing to add material on the inside. Well, you might think that, okay, that's an easy fix. Just build it up with some filler or something. However, this shape is different. So you'd still have to do something out here to change the shape of the extension or to the quarter itself. So I think when I'm, I'll do the same thing Wally did, and as I did with the Brooklyn Pony, break loose these welds. As you, as you can see, I've already sanded these and bared these spots where the spot welds are. But I will break those welds loose, flex this out a little bit, or as much as I can, and try to give this more of a curve. So let me set the camera to a different perspective so you can see what I'm talking about up here. So if I put the extension back up, it sticks out on this side right here. A good, probably uh, 3 16 of an inch it seems, at least an eighth that it sticks out. And it's close on the shape on the side. But like I was saying, if I bring it this way, bring it out a little bit, then obviously it fits good here, nice and flush, but a, an overlap here similar in that width. So ultimately the, the width of the extension kind of dictates what I'm going to do. Yeah, like I said, it would be easy maybe to build up this inside, but it's not right. It's not going to look right. That taper is going to be wrong to where it meets the deck lid. I'd rather try to play with the outside and get it moved out. Kind of hard to give you a great angle on this. You can only get the camera so close to the car based on the tripod, but if you can see this is with the inner lip or inner flange flush. You can see, maybe see how much is sticking out here. Let's see if I can zoom that in a little bit. And there you can see just how much is hanging over. But it's, it's close here at the top. I can't. But it's, it's real, you know, it's close here at the top. The width is almost spot on and it actually gets more tight down here at the bottom. So that tells me again, this section of the quarter is too flat. So the plan here is, again, to drill out these little spot welds, and they're, they're pretty small. So I'm just going to use a cordless drill with a 3 16 bit on it. I think that might be just enough. And of course I'm going to wear safety glasses here in protection. And once I get it, once I get it loose enough, or what I feel like it's going to break loose, I'll use this body chisel and, of course, a hammer. Aha! Went a little 
little too far on that one. <laughs> You know, that's not that big a deal. It just broke through. It's not going to hurt anything. Once it's welded back on, it'll be fine. So This one's down here, just right on the edge. See that broke? I don't know if you, you know, I probably couldn't see it, but it snapped real easy. That one snapped. A little tougher down here at the bottom, where you get this curved piece in the way, so I might have to come up with different ways. One more here at the bottom. And you may not have to do them all, but I like to have them all loose. It gives the metal uh, more flexibility. Actually, that one looks like it's come loose. And so has that one. Aha! You see that? <laughs> Just a little bit of leverage on that and it moved. Another thing that I noticed was this little ring right here was binding or touching this curved portion of this filler piece. So now it has some more clearance. And you can see, hopefully see, maybe see, if I can get, the, get it in here right how much it's actually moved because there you can see the edge of the hole that I made and how much it's pushed over already same way same way here you know it's already just moved <laughs> well, that's a lot closer now I have a little bit up here that's still fighting me but this lower section already looks better. So I'll have to figure out an easy way to push this up and out a little bit. And again, it's just going to be getting, getting some leverage, you know, something in here against it. And flexing that up and out. But so far, I feel like I'm off to a good start. Push that out. Yeah. That's already making a big difference. Okay. So now what I need to do is try to get it to stay out. And I think what I'll do, pretty sure I did this on the pony as well. I've got some little self-tapping screws. I'll pilot one, get it started in this hole, let's say up here, push out on it, and then tighten that screw up. And 
hopefully that'll hold it in place at least a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is you know put tension on it and then I'll drill through this hole. That'll help hold it out. It's already a lot better. Try to give you that long perspective here. If I put that in and I make the inside flush, where I talked about before, now you can see, I mean, it's already, it's almost dead on. It's going to take a little bit of filler to get that transition right on the money. Yeah. Much, much better. I did want to point out that the screw head is interfering a little bit with the fitment. So when I put it on there, the inside of the extension is hitting that head and it's kind of pushing it outboard a little bit. So once that screw is removed, it's going to fit even better. Wait a minute. What's he doing? You know, I bought this Vulcan TIG uh, Pro TIG 165 earlier this year. And I did a little bit of welding with it on my other channel, my workshop channel. And I thought, this might be a good opportunity to do some test welds on that quarter panel on Jade. It's also easier to move around in my big welder. So, yeah, let's give this a shot and see what happens. So on top of this welder, there is this kind of chart you can follow as far as welding um, different thicknesses, what your material type is, and then how large of a piece of tungsten you should have in here. So I checked the metal, and the outer, the quarter panel is basically 21 gauge. Pretty thin stuff. And if you look at this chart, it's telling you that 24 gauge, you should be using a 40,000 inch thick piece of tungsten. For a 16 gauge, 16 gauge, you should be 1 16th. Well, I'm going to go with the 1 16th because I'm welding 21 gauge, so it's in between these two. But I'm also, you know, I figure the extra thickness of metal for the back panel that the quarter panel actually welds to. We're going to see how this works. You know, I'm going to, I have, uh, you know, the argon already set up and shielding gas. 100% argon, 10 to 25 SCFH, which I believe is square, I'm assuming square cubic feet per hour. I'm not sure how that reads, but I have mine set at 20. And we'll see what happens. Now, you know, I've not welded sheet metal like this before. I've welded heavier things with TIG, but I really need to see how this welder will do. So let's give it a shot. Now this welder you can do 120 or 240 volt. I'm using 120. And so on the side here you see a little white box. That says 120 and then the orange one is 240. So that tells you that the dial, inside the dial, is your settings. So the white being 120. Now the for this gauge of thickness, it's saying set between 50 to 85 amps. So I'm going to go with 65. I don't know why, I just think I'm going to try 65. And then on the side here, let me turn this on, you have different settings. So it has TIG high frequency, TIG pulse, TIG lift, and stick welding, which I'm not doing obviously. So I'm going to leave it on TIG HF. And we're going to see how this goes.
Now I do want to point out the rod that I'm using is just a regular mild steel rod and this one is 65 thousandths thick. So hopefully it's not too thick, but we're going to find out in just a minute. Again, I've not done this before. This is a new thing, at least on sheet metal. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to try to put some, some weld on this hole that I created and see if I can't seal it in. Try again. <laughs> Okay, so I'm realizing that I'm much better at MIG welding, but <laughs> I'm gonna keep on, I'm gonna give this another shot. I just wanna try, I wanna make this work, you know? Because I've always wanted to do some TIG stuff, and this is a great place to try it. It's not gonna hurt anything, uh, and if I can't do it, I'll go get my MIG and make it, make it right. No, it looks better. I'll say that. I can't say it is better. I feel like Andrew. Grease rookie, experimenting. I'm gonna try something else here. I'm gonna clean up this edge and see if I can't just do a, an edge weld, just so I know. See, the thing is, I'm used to, like when I do my MIG weld, even if I have a hole behind there, I can manipulate the wire, catch the edge of the hole and work my way around and fill it in. This takes a different type of finesse. And I think I may have, because there was a hole behind this, that was part of the problem. I'm not trying to make excuses, but it's an excuse. <laughs> so let me see what happens on this edge, if I can, figure out how to make this do what I want. Yeah. 
I still don't feel like that's actually connected. I feel like it's just sitting on top. That one feels better. Well, it didn't move. That's a good sign, right? That's a little bit better. Still not great, though. But like I said, I, you know, I'm kind of learning as I go, too. And this is another disadvantage. Like if I want to MIG weld, I could take my, this hammer and push this in and then come in with my MIG and just buzz it shut. But without that, I've got to come up with a way, you know, to clamp it. So maybe, maybe I should just do MIG, you know? I'm just, I'm so much more comfortable with it. I'm going to try it a little bit more. I'm going to get a clamp on there and see if I can't make something look decent. All right, I have a clamp on. Now see, this is again what I was talking about, finding a good way to get in here, you know, to, to put the heat to it so that I can, and then add the wire without stuff interfering. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's not good. It's not doing what I want. You know? Hey. Yeah. I think I'm gonna get out the Meg. I tried. Go with what you know. This is what I know. I know how to use a Meg. So much easier.
Now, of course, it's all welded, so I need to take my sanding disc and blend this down because it'll interfere with the way the extension fits. Now that I've blended down all the welds on the you know back edge here, I want to fit up the extension and show you just how nice that is. I mean, very little, if any, sticking out anywhere. I mean, it feels pretty spot on. Let's see if I can zoom in and show you that edge or lack of an edge. So I'll show you what it looks like from the back. Hopefully you can see enough detail with this. Again, it fits very nice on the side. And it has just a, just a little bit sticking out over here. And I'll, I'll put it at a different angle so you can see it. But it's very, very close. If anything, it'll take just a little tiny bit of filler. Or, you know, and I'm not a fan of this because this is so thin but I might be able to tap that in just a little bit and change that angle. I don't want to take the chance of breaking these. They are original. But it may just take a little bit of a tap to try to get that just a little bit tighter. Let me see if I can set this up at a different angle and show you. Now hopefully I can get this in here and show you that, that overlap is very, very small. I mean, this is flush on the outside, and you can see there's a little bit of a transitional variation here, you know, like the uh, extension sits slightly higher, and it's just going to take a little bit of manipulating, and I can change that ever so slightly. So what that really means is it's going to take a little bit of filler build up here to transition into this side, you know, because it's uh, just a little bit higher. And then over here, just the opposite. Because the extension is actually a little bit lower than the quarter panel. So what I'll do is I'll add some filler on the back side of this and bring that corner up and blend it into the transition of the quarter panel. Sometimes you have to do those things. You're just not going to get it dead on perfect. But doing these minor adjustments, you know, like I think this is minor, breaking these spot welds loose, and reshaping the quarter panel that makes a world of difference and it reduces the amount of filler that will eventually be on the car so just the way I look at it and other people may not but that's how I'm looking at it I thought I would also show you the passenger side what's really nice about this pat you know the passenger panel is I don't have to do much of anything when I put up the extension it follows the line very nicely. I mean, it's not sticking out. There's very little transition there. And I do notice that this particular uh, extension, it may be hard to see, but it's deflected right here. It's actually punched in a little bit. Now, that's going to be hard to get back out. I don't know if I can get a good angle to show you if you can see it or not. But right about there is a deflection where it's pushed in. And I can even run my hand over it and feel it kind of dip. That's the only part that may take some work. I don't want to try to straighten it out necessarily. Um, I'll, I'll build that up a little bit. I'll try to get out a little bit, but more than likely I'll just have to shape that with filler and live with it. Because I'm too worried about cracking this stuff. You know, this pot metal is not meant to be reshaped. Now inside here, it's spot on. It fits super nice. The only issue that I see, and I'll, let me reposition the camera and, I, and I'll show you what may be an issue. Now the only real issue that comes to mind here is it wants to, we'll say teeter. How about that? I'll use the word teeter. It wants to pivot. See that right there? The reason for that is there's 
actually a high point right here on the quarter panel. And that's pretty minor as far as you know shape issues. And typically all I'm all I would do at that point is just take a hammer and tap that and try to flatten that high point out just a little bit. Let's see if I can. pretty close I can still feel it just just a little when you're doing this you know look for the point of contact and see where it rotates you know back and forth on that point of contact like a seesaw so you got to find that and then try to eliminate that and sometimes when it's doing that contact it could be that you see a witness what I call a witness mark and that is it's kind of chafing and it'll bear a little or put a little doll finish or maybe knock enough paint off to where it's shiny and that lets you know where the high spot is. So that's that's again pretty close and probably enough that I can live with. And uh, anyway, just some information for you. So you wanted a jade video? You got a jade video. Now I know when I put this quarter panel on that I was going to have some issues with the way the extension fit. And, you know, after reviewing Wally's video on his 68, I thought, why not? I'll look at this. And obviously I did the same kind of thing that Wally did on his 68, which was in reference to the work that I did on the Brooklyn Pony. So my video helped him out. His video reminded me that I needed to look at this. Again, I'm much happier with it the way it fits, and I do know that maybe TIG welding is not going to be my strong point, <laughs> but I had to give it a shot and see if it would work. I know I'll be able to use it somewhere else, but apparently not in this situation. I'll go with my MIG and knock this stuff out and make it happen. Now again, I'm still going to have to do some transitions work on this, you know, with body filler, and I may do another video on that to cover that process. I know a lot of people like to see the body work type of videos, so I may do that with this and show the, you know, the end result. But anyway, that'll be the end of this video. And thank you for watching. If you haven't already, I ask you to subscribe. Those of you that have been along for the ride all this time, I appreciate you being here. And if you would, throw a thumbs up on there, leave a comment, let me know what you think of this video. And by all means, at this time, with the way the world is, wash your hands <laughs> and take care of yourselves. See ya. Now, as far as settings go, I have it, I'm connected, uh, I plug, a little bit. You know, I, I wanted to mess with this. No. And like I said, I was looking at Harvey's project, the 68 convertible. No, not Harvey. It's not Harvey's project. It's Wally. 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 Now, I know when I put this quarter panel on that it had some fitment issues like that. See you.